this computer. I have chat. Let me pull it up. Chat, chat, chat. Chat over here. Yeah. Oh, that's too much slides. 35 slides is easy. 128, I will not do it. <laughs> no kidding. I saw that. I nearly freaked out. Was, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I will not do 128. That's too much. Too much on you, too much on me also. So, today we are going to talk about uh, network environments and the importance of network in terms of security and in terms of, you know, programming and security. Because... And you will see the reason of most of the attack going to be the, the network. So, um, what we are going to go through this uh, chapter, we are going to learn how to um, understand what the meaning of um, networking, security environment, da, da, da. whenever communication is involved as in a software system, the information is, is, you know, that is communicated immediately become a high risk of attack. Uh, communication is the transmission of system information within or outside the system boundaries. This is the objective of this course and the goals of this course. Again, I mentioned it last class also where if you look on the, the, the goals, you will find it's almost the same or it's exactly the same of the discussion post. The reason why I want you to reach that goal, that goal. And um, before, before starting and, and talking about anything in this chapter there is if someone tell you if they're that they are lying there is no 100 percent security okay there's no 100 percent security but we are going to try our best to make sure that we address all the common problems and we address whatever problems that we have now, because the moment that, and I had like a lot of students ask me how I can protect it, you know, my system disconnected from the internet immediately without thinking. Because the moment that we connect a computer or a system, regardless, a computer or not, a system or a server to the internet, now it become, this became, uh, become uh, uh, at risk of being uh, in a cyber attack. Now, if you take the word cyber, and you want to define it, cyber security, cyber attack, cyber crime, whatever cyber you want to have, any of the word cyber, if you take it and you define it, you will realize that it has um, the link where it say online. Now, technically, network attack can occur inside the, the organization. That's one of, of the things that we may have is that Network attack can occur or may, you know, have the possibility of occurring inside uh, inside of one single network. But taking it, I'm just I'm trying to do something on my other screen. It's not working. Okay. Um, but cyber means the attack has been done online, outside, and went inside. And that's where we have the, the problem started having a lot of application need to change because this application um, not helping in terms of security. Let me change that. Yeah, now I can see. Uh, <clears throat> proximity, ID, net, not security, networking could potentially be considered the root of all cyber crime. This is true statement. Um, because the moment that you connect um, <clears throat> your computer or your system to the network, it will become um, at risk. Uh, when, <clears throat> in 2014, I completed my master's. And one of the things that I was searching for is about information security and cybersecurity because this is in my master's. In. And I, I, I reached an article that was so interesting to read. Just because a company works inside the United States, it's at risk of getting attacked. Now, there's a lot of enemies out there. They trying to, be, just because you are inside the United States, they try to target you. They don't, don't care about other countries. They don't have the problems that we have in terms of cybersecurity. 
And that's one of the points where the article talking about organization working in the United States, immediately they have the subject of become, you know, being a victim or being attacked um, by criminals online, cyber criminals. And that's why we, we want to secure the system. We want to, to have a really good team to secure our network. Networking, if you are the, not familiar with the term, is allowing one machine to communicate with another. That's a network. We have internal uh, local area network, LANs, and we have wide area network. We have one. We have personal area network, BAN. We have campus area network. CAN, we have one more. Uh, metropolitan area network, uh, which is uh, MAN. Now, we have a number of networks, and we have internal and external, and that's when we talk about communication between system and another system inside uh, one organization, that's, uh, that's local uh, communication and or internal communication, and anything from outside going to be external. We have intranet and intern internet, Intranet is the communication network or website that's available only inside the network of the organization. And this is intranet, is an internal network. Um, external network going, or you know, the internet is the internet, how we can go and check and, and do a lot of things online. The fastest system in the world is the one that is turned off, or you know, the safest um, system in the world is the one that's turned off. Uh, pure is uh, concrete or buried in a valid. That's what I mentioned. There's no security, 100% security. If you have connected your computer, regardless, if you come connected your computer, now you are become a, a, at risk of getting attacked. And introducing Eva, uh, if you have done any work in networking communication, you will likely know these two individuals, Alice and Bob. Um, which Alice will represent A and Bob will represent B. And you will find that if we are talking about databases, you will, we will, you will have the sign of a database and say A and the sign of a database where it say B. Or we're talking about two computers on the network, we have a computer sign and we have A and another computer that has a B. And that's why we have A, B, because it's representing two. It's the easiest way to deliver a message talking about networking is to have two in communication or three and when we have more than that it will be much more complicated that's why we want to uh, in order to deliver a message we want to shrink our explanation for other so it will make it easy for them to understand so these are their you know personal of A and B, respectively, two nodes that are sending information back and forth. <sighs> Into this happy world, I, I don't, I don't like how they, they they put the chapter. In this happy world of Alice and Bob sending whatever they want, however they want, without risk comes Eve, which is the eavesdropping. Uh, eavesdropping is the method of um, they use to uh, listen to two computers talking. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, ways where uh, I hope that I uh, one day I will let you see. Um, there's a lot of ways where you can uh, listen to communication on on your own network and see which device sending to where and what's receiving and what. All of that calls eavesdropping, and we can listen to any kind of networking using using different type of application. If you use like Kali Linux, you can. In, you can have Kali Linux on a virtual machine or on actual machine. I have it on an actual machine. I can run it and I just, you know, just dump the uh, TCP and I will start getting all the communication on my network. I can listen, I can use it, I can take it into a file and put it in, and take it to a Wireshark and analyze it to see what's this data, what's the sending and what's receiving. And that's technically type what, what the, the main job of those who work in security, network security, they will bring the data, analyze it, and see what's vulnerable things that's being shared, and they try to protect it. A good way to start thinking about secure communication is what you want, when you want, when you are talking to your friend or family in private. If you are sending a private picture, you want it to keep it private. Now, 
there's a terminology in cybersecurity or information security called known as the CIA triad. CIA now authentication. Um, I will talk about it after that. CIA stands for this, you know, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. That's an information security. Over here, authentication, we will come to it. Confidentiality. What's the meaning of confidentiality? Some businesses, if you go work with, talk with businesses, they say this is a confidential uh, data or this is public or this is private. Now, how you classify data is totally different. But you have something called confidentiality, which means if I'm, if I want to have this message to be sent privately, it should be stay as privately. That's confidentiality. So if you read the definition of confidentiality, you will find that the you know the definition, the, the the confidentiality is about only authorized people or an authorized individual who are authorized to view the data can view the data. Who's authorized to see the data can see. Any other who are not authorized should not see it. And and if you really read through um, the news when, whenever a cybersecurity attack occurs or a security breach occurs, and you read, they will say data compromised, data compromised. The meaning of compromise, they took it. They had the ability to view this data and that compromise. So a violation to confidentiality is a security breach. As a security breach that's happened, if a system get compromised, a confidentiality has been breached because that individual or the attacker can see or view the data. Now, integrity means only authorized people can edit on the information, manipulate the information. This is integrity. If I send a message to you, you need to, to know this message has arrived without any modification, without any changes, without any um, someone uh, manipulated. Like, for example, we have one of the type of attack called man in the middle attack. Man in the middle attack take a message from you, alter it, and represent it to you or send it to the other person as you are becoming sending it to it or reply to you as a different person and that's man in the middle technically listen to what you say and get inside and start sending or receiving information now this is a violation to integrity if you are not authorized to to change on a data you should not be able to change on the data you can see it but you cannot change it we have this ability now you may hear insider uh, compromise and technically what the meaning of insider that's an an employee maybe cannot see data, has the ability, saw the data by mistake. This is a security uh, breach. This is a compromise of uh, information, and this is you know violation. Someone edit on it, it's a big deal. But someone edit on it, that means it's a violation to the integrity. Authentication is to ensure that this guy saying that I am Ahmed Al Zaidi. I want to make sure that this is the guy who's stating who is to be. So authentication, it is related to the communication means you know you are talking or texting to the person or entity who they, you wish to talk with. So technically, um, whenever you go to a system, whenever you want to log into any, any type of application, what you will put, you will put your, you know, your username and this is identification. Your password. I can I can say that I am so on so on, but who said this is me? I need to authenticate, right? So the username that you put is what identification. The password is authentication. And now we have two two factor authentication and technically double check. Okay, it's one way to protect the system by having a double check. And, and that's what we would want to talk about. Using materials to make sure this person who's stating he, his name is Ahmed Al Zaidi is Ahmed Al Zaidi. So I can maybe ask him for his fingerprint. Uh, maybe I will ask him for facial recognition, voice recognition. I can ask a lot of information to make sure that this person is the person who's stating to 
to me that he is. Non-repetition, which is, means the person or entity to whom you want to speak, cannot deny speaking to you and is therefore held accountable for what was said. Technically, when you have employee inside a network, you want to hold them accountable for their action. Okay, so CIA can ensure for us that I can hold the user accountable because I'm, I, I will tell them we have information that you need to know what to do and how to do it and you will hold them accountable. Don't you say, not me, I didn't click on that link. Who proved that I click on that link? There's ways that I can say you by so-and-so and they clicked on that link because I'm collecting these logs and so on. Confidentiality can, you know, mostly be provided by the use of cryptography. Now, when I send a text message saying that I'm coming to tonight and I send it to someone, this message has been sent in a plain text. But if I want to say something, now if you have kids, you start using codes for something, right? You use codes for some, some information. That code, your kids will not know it, but you and maybe your partner will know it, right? So this is a way of cryptography. You're using something to replace a fact or something, you're replacing the word. So rather than saying, you know, I'm coming tonight, I will agree with a person that I'm going to, uh, in fact, I'm going to, rather having an A, I'm going to have Z. So I'm going to have it backwards. And this is one of the way that a cipher can work. And technically I can say, hey, I'm replacing the A with a Z. And we go backwards. So I will write a message. It will not mean something to who's reading, but only who knows the code can understand the message because they can flip it. And this is technically cryptography. Oops. The science of secrecy. Cryptography is in a practice that dates back to the, you know, more than 2,000 years. Number a lot, we didn't have computers 2,000 years. And, and in fact, we had used cryptography more than 2,000 years. Uh, Egyptian people use cryptography when they when they painted or, or, or put cats on, on their statues or they put on the wall something. The caveman did put, uh, yeah, it's a war thing. Um, we will talk about war. Uh, when they put on, on the wall something, this is codes that they use that this is dangerous. The X means don't do it, don't go to the to near from this bear because he will eat you. So I will put a bear and I will put X. It's a code, it's a way to send a message, okay? Cryptography in use has been used by um, thousands of years. Let me bring it back. Imagine with me the situation. Imagine with me this scenario. Two armies having a fight, let me by swords. Okay, or by like whatever in in the Middle Ages. I don't know what they were what they were using in the Middle Ages. They have swords and kind of guns and so on. Imagine with me. One of the army went behind a, a, a location and they sent a, a messenger to the king saying, "Hey, we need to have more people. We need to have more food. We are running out of food. We have a lot of wounded warriors." We have um, running out of, of um, you know, guns and so on. We need your help. And we are located in so on, so on location. We are without food and we have a lot of people who are sick. They cannot fight. And we are running less in a number of people who can fight. They put it in a message and they send it to with a messenger. And the messenger get captured by the enemy. What happened? They know where they are located. They know who, you know, what's their situation, and they can go immediately and, and, and destroy the other part, right? But if they put it as a poet, or they really put it, technically in poets, they used it in uh, like Arabic people use it a lot when they were start using their poets as codes. Um, 
they put it as a love letter to someone from someone to someone else with a love letter no one care about it right it's a love letter but if you go and you use you, you change um the, the the words now that you understand the message spies use it a lot when spies they were sending messages they don't send it by clear information they will use its codes and they will encrypt it to make sure that if it captured it will not do any problem for them because it's a normal message and that's the use of you know cryptography greek introduced it of a form of cryptography using the letter trans uh, transposition by a winding or a leather strap around a stick and writing the message a lot a substitution cipher that the one that I, I, I just mentioned is one of the which each letter of the alphabet is substituted by another symbol or a letter it is no longer sufficient uh, security because it's easy to uh, figure out this is in, in French I cannot uh, pronounce it uh, it's an erase uh, cipher which is thought it was originally uh, discovered by Juvan Pizza and mistakenly attributed to Pelsa di Ventura, which is technically is one of which multiple substitution alphabetics uh, were used to, re you know, repeating patterns such that uh, neighboring symbols were encrypted differently. What I mean, and, and and let me talk about this substitution cipher. Substitution cipher, I will say, okay, I'm going to use alphabetics, and um, I'm going from Z to A. And I'm substituting by three. So technically, the A I will go to the Z, go three three letters, maybe X, X, oh, I don't know. X, and the A will become X, and so on. And I, I will replace the entire thing. Or I will say, okay, one will be A, two ones will be B, and so on. And I will replace it. And that's the substitution. I will send you a message with numbers, and you can figure it out. Those who are geeks with computer science, they send messages in binary, and you need to translate it back to from binary to English to understand this message. Yeah, they use it. I had to do that. Cryptography in the wartime era. World War II introduced the breaking of the German Enigma cipher during the World War II. Enigma machine was a portable machine device that looked like a typewriter with a lab board it had a number of encryption wheels or rotors which uh, could be changed and rotate rotated to new origin and so on the enigma was uh, an incredibly strong encryption system and it was only broken by who uh, created use of cryptography analysis and a human misuse of the cipher by a german military Marianne Ruski, uh, a member of the Polish Cypher Bureau, developed a, a device called Bomba Cryptologia. It's an attempt to def defeat the Enigma Cypher. The introduction of a new rotor by a German military, the problem became uh, quantitatively too difficult to solve with, you know, model and personal hand. Enigma Cypher was defeated the combined use of mathematical attack, crypts in, in, in the intercepted uh, text, and first use of the computer to attack a crypto system. A grip is a piece of known text in a plain text that is corresponding to a section of a known cipher text. In an engineering, uh, an engineer known as uh, Tommy, Flower design uh, constructed the closure of Mark One, which is a first partially programmable electric digital computer. This was not a fully programmable machine like ENAAC. This device was developed at Bletchley Park and began the era of computer power being used to attack encryption. Bletchley Park has succeeded. Uh, an enigma message were compromised successfully strong, uh, shortening the war by the estimated two to three years. 
the national standard in the 1970s would see the next great exp expansion of cryptography with both the national standard for encryption and the introduction of public key cryptography. Horace Fistel at IBM developed a commercial block cipher called Lesphere, which, which is the block cipher would operate on a fixed size set of plain text bits and produce an output of an equivalent number of cipher bits that was produced from this, the plain text uh, bits mixed with the, a key. What we needed to achieve over here, we needed to achieve the confusion, uh, which technically it is the property of making the relation between the key and the cipher as complex as possible. We want to achieve confusion over here. I want to make it complicated enough, not easy to break, complicated enough, but simple. Do I, it's clear? No, complicated and simple. That's what we want to achieve over here. Complicated, not easy to break, simple how to work on it or work it. So confusion is the property of making the relation between the key and the ciphertext as complex as possible. Division, which is, means the ciphertext output should relate to the plain text input in a very complex way. Symmetric encryption means that a single key, which has to be kept secret, is used to encrypt the plain text and the same key used to decrypt the cipher text. What I'm, I'm talking about here. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I did a, a lot of websites. I programmed a lot of websites in my life. A couple of years ago, we needed to, because I'm, you know, we programming websites and there's other programmer who took your file and tried to develop on it and you want to protect this file. We use something called Zen. Zen and technically Zend encryption work for us by, we have a file, we put it inside Zend, Z-E-N-D, we put it inside Zend and we will have an encrypted file and with that the one that we send it to our client. The problem is if you have the, the program, you can desend it and technically you go to desend and you just put the file that's encrypted and voila, the plain text showed up. And that's the use of single key because the same exact key used to encrypt and decrypt. And that's when we had a problem with the keys and we needed to find it away. Asymmetric encryption uses two separate keys. One key is used to encrypt plain text and a second used to decrypt it. So we have private keys and public keys, okay? The encryption key is called public key and the decryption key is called private key because you will not know the private key and you will not know the message until you have the private key. The quest of perfect secrecy, modern advance in, uh, advances in cryptography continue and the goal still remains to develop an algorithm that will provide perfect secrecy in communication. Quantum uh, cryptography would use photos and establish a key and a simple act of reading the photo for a spin uh, destroyed the ability to read it again, making it a great lap toward being the perfect means to establish a secret key. Only one algorithm has been found so far that establishes perfect secrecy, which is the one-time pad. A one-time pad uses simple substitution with key length equal to the length of the message so that each letter is substituted by a different alphabet without repetition. This cipher is immune to a brute force because a brute force attack will yield every possible result of equal length to the message without any without any way to determine which is the one actual message. And technically why? Um, whenever we have an attack, whenever we have an attack, you went into a database, you will try to find as your best to find the pattern, the pattern that is being repeated itself. 
the pattern between each and every message. If you found that pattern, you can crack the code, crack the algorithm. So you keep trying to see how they are changing. And now when you know it, you can break it down. So over here, giving the same exact output of, of code, because when we want to ensure integrity, there's the checksum and there's SAM that's going to be added to the message that you're going to send. And there's something will be added to um, the thing that you will put it or even the, the text that you're going to put it in a database. By that, the system will know that this message has been not been altered. By that add-on, if I know exactly this pattern being replay, uh, repeated always, I can find the message or way of um, having it to be and so on. The reason no one uses one time paths in network communication because the difficulty of transmitting the key from one end to another is difficult as trans transmitting the message in the first place. The big problem with one time pad is the key size has to be equivalent to the message list and cannot be used more than once. Eve unleashed. The simplest scenario is where Alice sends Bob a message, which is M, in, in the clear or without any encryption. Eve can intercept this message often without the detection of either parties with or without the, any encryption. Eve can read the message and you know store the information for the use at you know different times. Eve can take the message offline and start working to break the encryption scheme. Some type of encryption are difficult than others, so the choices of the crypto system to be used is essential in protecting the message. The lowest order of attack on crypto system is the use of the brute force attack. That's weird. My printer start printing. Uh, <laughs> someone hacked it. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That was like looking at something quite wrong. Okay, someone hacked it. Measures <laughs> should involve similar consideration because both are essential to protecting your software and your information on, and both. Uh, represent single piece of information separating an attack from what is vulnerable. A dictionary attack is the use of common words to from possible keys or password. A better, uh, you know, variant of this is the hybrid days, which is word and numbers. Dictionary attack. A dictionary attack will go, to, and that's why technically you should have your password not from a dictionary word. That's why a dictionary attack will go and keep whatever possible in a dictionary that a list of information and try to find what's going on. Okay. Uh, sec uh, security by uh, obscurity means you relay on the attacker not knowing how the internal me mechanism of your software or security operates as means of securing the system. The strength, okay, let me put it over here. If an attacker know what type of operating system you use or what type of software you use or what type of code or algorithm you use, there's no need to secure it because it's easy to crack. So that's why we talk between each other, right? We talk in, in, in hey, I'm using the RSA2 and I will, I'm using IS, AES. No, don't talk about this information. This is security. You don't t talk about it because if I know, I can crack it. I can know what you're doing, how you are securing it, and how you're working on it, and I can manipulate that. That's the meaning. The strength of, uh, of your security should be in the key and not the, in the algorithm chosen. You must assume that the atta an attacker know how the message is encrypted and how your security scheme works, even if this is not the case. Uh, 
malicious modification and inside dose insertion. Eavesdropping is generally a passive activity and uh, the uh, you know, participant are unaware of the extra presence. A cryptographic uh, hash algorithm is one way algorithm that converts um, the original message into a fixed size by a crypto, you know, cryptography uh, complex process. Okay, a yeah, uh, a higher or and more reliable means of authentication is non-repetition. This means that the message sent is generated to be from the identified sender to this, uh, and the sender cannot later deny sending it. That's why the moment that you hit send in an email, it's gone. There's no way that you can stop it. And that's in terms of here to come, why I cannot stop a message that I just sent. I changed my mind. No, it's already passed. Network communication follow a structure. So you will often be working within an existing framework to transmit the content from your message. The, this framework can limit the size of message based on the structure of packets that is being transmitted. And the packet it's run is limited by the character characteristics of the network of which it will travel on. Making the connection. We have something known as a protocol. It's a set of rules when you send one message to another based on a protocol. A protocol is a set of structure of, for a message that allows a network hardware to, to, to remain what information is being sent and what is uh, to expect. A protocol can include a single pattern for all communication or multiple patterns for continued communication between parties. Dating from the 1978, the International Organization of Standardization, ISO, began defining what has evolved into the Open System Interconnect OSI model. OSI model, the physical layer, which is layer one, and technically we start from now. So layer one, two, three, four, five, seven. So from down, the physical layer is the primary co concrete uh, concerned with the connecting the machine to the mo you know medium of transmission. The data link, which is layer two, start to provide identification characteristics to each machine on the network, such as the physical address or of a device, which is which is known as media access control, media access control MAC. And technically, it's a hexadecimal code. Um, addresses, MAC addresses, and the ability to de uh, detect errors in the physical layer. Routing between machines is provided at network layer three. The transport layer, which is layer four, is where you find the most common uh, network transmission protocol. This layer is responsible for providing end to end transfer of data detecting errors in transmission and retransmitting data if necessary. Stop over here. We have two main protocols, TCP protocol and UDP protocol. UDP protocol do not care of retransmitting. Okay? UDP protocol will keep sending a message nonstop. So if you have 10 packets, I will send these 10 packets. I don't care about it. The, the network is conjected. I don't care if you didn't receive the message or not. I don't care. U UDP is used for, guess what? Streaming, just like how we are talking right this moment, is about streaming. This is a UDP. Now, do we have uh, a TCP, the other one? TCP care about if the network uh, conjected. If I can see that the network conjected, what I'm going to do, I will intentionally delaying the message. I will send a message and I will keep waiting to get an acknowledgement. And if I did not get an acknowledgement in a specific time, I will resend the message. That's why TCB have the package has numbers on them. UDB don't. Okay. So again, in layer four, is responsible for sending the message if necessary. 
The session layer, which is layer uh, five, uh, sits above the transport layer and is tasked with organizing connection between a network node and a remote entity or services. The presentation layer, which is layer six above the session layer, uh, you know, translate translates between application and network format. This layer is primarily concerned with the representation of data and any possible structure of data for use of the application layer. Guess what? Next, layer seven going to be the application layer. The highest level of the OSI model is the application layer is where the software is directly involved in directly communicating uh, network communication. Technically, we went through networking in 35 slides. That's not nice. Because like networking, you take a couple of classes. Roll up the welcome mat. One of the highest risk to a system that is uh, connected to a network is uninvited traffic. The more complex a system becomes, the more likely it is that there is a provable backdoor that is not blocked. A good housekeeping rule is develop development is in the development is to make sure that modules are or object that opens a session also closed it. Also, most of the programmers, because you know we are talk, talking about secure, you know, securing programming. Most of the programmers, what they do, a backdoor, and that's one of the reason why Microsoft needed to let go um, Internet, Internet Explorer because it has a backdoor. Questions. No questions? Why? Okay, let's go ahead and talk about your project, project three. Yeah, I'm taking taking you project by project. So, uh, modules, go to um, project three, two-factor authentication. As I mentioned, when a user uses the password, this is authentication. Username or, or at this moment, um, the user or the email is your identification. The password is for authentication. Two factors is to add one layer of security, another layer of security. And, and that's why we call it security in depth. Technically, you have more than one, than one layer to ensure that the system is secure. So uh, project three is about two-factor authentication. It's asking you to create, if you don't have a Gmail account, and after you create an account, you will go ahead and um, enable uh, two-factor authentication. Guess what? Uh, if you go and you download Authenticator, authenticator um, which is Google Authenticator over here, I guess, yeah, I just, yeah, okay. I deleted a couple of days ago, but this is a new one. I cannot see, right? Yeah, this is a new one. So let's go ahead and create um, the project for you. Let's let's do it just now. Uh, I'm going to use one of my old emails that I used for um, work a couple of years ago, but I still have access to it. It's uh, my, you know, old system. So technically, I will go here. Old company that I created in 2014. Now I'll go to Gmail, I will go to, and this is, by the way, this is the new pictures. I will go to the settings, I will go to see all settings. Yeah, it's loading, don't read anything up here. Come on, faster, faster. Okay, now I will go to account. I will go to Google, um, Google account settings. I will go to security. I will go to the single uh, signing into Google and I have two step verification is off. I will enable it. So I will go ahead and I will um, sign in. I will put the password. Should I have the password? Yes, I should have the password. And now it's asking me if I'm using my Samsung Galaxy 10. Um, yes, over here, try it now. And yeah, it's signing over here. So it will send me here a message and say, this is, yes, this is me. 
now to add, show my phone number and I can see you as a backup option. Yeah, that, that's my backup. Now I will have the second verification. I will get a code to my, um, B one two three nine three. Oh come on. B one two three nine three. Next. And now I have it turned on to be on my Galaxy. Now I have a bunch of devices. I can choose even that I can use uh, an authenticator app. And I will say that's Android. And I can scan on my device the QR that's showing off front of you, for example. And I will um, scan it. And now I have, and now I have an account that's been added to my authenticator. You can see that I have an account right this moment showing a key that is um, available for me. So it will ask me for the code. Let's wait for to replace three six two six. Three five one, verify, and yeah, well done. That's it. Now we enabled um, verification. This is the screenshot you will take and send it to me. Okay. So if you go and you read, 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 I just need to have a screenshot where it say one one screenshot that show that this two step verification is on. That's it. Okay. So either you get a hundred or you get zero. Because if you send me a, pay, a picture where it say off, it's a zero, you didn't make it. Or if say, there's like another picture, I will give you a zero. Or if you say on, I will give you a hundred. Questions? Uh, no, no. I just I never set up two-step verification because I always felt like if somebody had my phone, which is more likely to me to get stolen, then they would have an easier time getting into my email. But I guess I just got to, I don't oh, know. Yeah. If That's a different story. If, now, this is a different story. The story yeah. is if you say, remember this device. That's a different situation. Because if you say, remember this device, it will always log in when you have the device that you're using, the same exact device. But if someone steal your, you, you know, your phone, you can go back to a, a device that you're already using and just say, I don't have access to this device anymore. And immediately, these codes will not work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK, yeah. Just say that I don't have access to this device anymore, and it will be removed. Questions? No questions? OK, then. Uh, see you next week. We will talk about. Project four, chapter four, and project four. Next week will mark the end of module one. And then we'll start doing complicated stuff. Okay, questions? No questions? Solid, thank you very Thank much. you. Thank you. Enjoy, bye-bye.